Redditors who have lived in a haunted house, what are your most unexplainable paranormal experiences? I live in a house built in the 1800s. It survived the two world wars and it's seen some crap I imagine. One of the previous owners had two sons, who both committed suicide. A lot of strange stuff happens. The animals, dog and parrots, will wake up from their naps and follow something with their heads just as they would follow me if I walk around. Also, before I switched rooms in the house, my brother had a room and he refused to sleep there as he would hear voices. He slept with my parents, he was a child, until the day he got my old room and since then has slept in that room without problems. There's also a whole floor we don't use and I sleep in the attic, and I pass through that floor to get to my attic weird explanation but it's a weird house and I have a motion activated light there that goes on as I'm walking the stairs to that unused floor. It would also switch on in the middle of the night while nobody is walking under the motion detector. Also, there's cold spots. A lady who had two husbands die on her in the same house. That's the house my dad decides to buy. The first one hung himself from the rafters in the garage and the second one fell ill and died in his bed in the basement. I lived in the basement room and often just felt like I was being watched all the time. The bedroom in the basement has a secret storage room behind a bookshelf with a locking latch. I would always wake up to find the door wide open. It happened so often that I would wake up cold and routinely go shut and lock the latch of the door in the middle of the night. For the longest time I thought it was my dad or stepbrothers messing with me but it wasn't. My stepbrother now occupies that room and he says it still happens to him and that he's even seen it open on its own. There are no air vents or anything so I've ruled out wind. Also, in the garage, I always see light coming from under the door through the crack only to open the door to pitch black. I've heard sounds coming from the garage only to find saw blades clanging together and slightly rotating in the place on the whole storage wall. Didn't think anything of it at first but when you find stuff moving on more than one occasion, it makes you look over your shoulder at the rafters and wonder. I grew up in a huge 17th century house. Here are some pics to give you the idea about how creepy and beautiful too it was. Today it has been completely remodeled on the inside. But while we lived there, it was still in the beautiful old style with art, ballroom, marble floor halls, statues. You get it. During my nine years living there I found out the following things. It once was a brothel. It once was a plague hospital. It once was a normal hospital. It once was a morgue. During World War II it was a German SS post before half of it got shot to shit and killed about 20 Germans. Fun thing was the mortar that did that fell in the place my room was at where the Sres were having a meeting at the time they think. Napoleon slept there a couple of days which is pretty cool. There were three families where multiple murders occurred inside the house. Here are my accounts of growing up there. As a kid I saw a lot of shadows, heard a lot of weird noises, the usual. My sister who lived on the third floor came down to my room a lot at night to stare at me, sleepwalking, and sometimes slept in my room and forgot about it the next night. The doors creaked and opened and closed on themselves a lot. Which can happen in an old house due to draft. Now this is all stuff that any kid can imagine due to the suggestive state an old house can give a person, nothing really scary. Also the alarm went off a lot during the night, triggered by air. One time, my parents were in China for business. Me and my brother and sisters slept at other places because my parents were away for quite a time. I had to go to hockey practice but I forgot some gear so me and my friend went to get it. The house was engulfed in darkness and very silent. As we walked out of my room, we have footsteps in the attic. Two of my siblings had the bedrooms there, so I thought one of them was at home. 
I shouted at him which made the footsteps stop. After five seconds or so we heard the footsteps coming closer to the stairs and actually setting foot on the very old wooden creaky steps. One step at a time. I actually felt a weight setting foot in front of me. Very strange. But I saw nothing. Nevertheless, we were twelve so we knocked the F out of there. Outside my friend had a total nervous breakdown because he saw some scary face form that looked like an alien. To him, he never set foot in my house again. I credit it all to the creepiness of the house but that one night with my friend still gives me the chills. This might get a little buried but I'll share anyway. So two weeks before we moved, my dad and I toured our house and I noticed this guy was painting the water heater which I thought was weird AF but I was like tense or whatever. Anyway we moved in on a Wednesday and my parents let me stay home from school until the following Monday and preoccupied me with coloring books and a new dollhouse. In my brand and new crayons pack, there literally wasn't a blue crayon, like it was a 64 pack but there were only 63 crayons in it. One day I went downstairs into the basement and my blue crayon was next to the hot water heater and scribbled on there it said, Hi Fitness 6, Kevin, I was so confused. I started school and my new classmates were like, OMG do you live in Kevin's house? Exclamation mark. Your house is gonna be haunted! Exclamation mark. It turned out that Kevin was a little eight-year-old boy that lived in our house prior to us and he got hit by a car in the front yard. He would write notes if you left out a pen and paper, open and close doors, adjust the thermostat, the kind where you had to turn a knob, and always turn on Christmas music when it was that time of year smiley face. We had a swing set in the backyard and even on the hottest, calmest days of summer. Only the left swing would be moving back and forth. We had this dumb cat that I would lock in my bedroom at night and every morning, my parents would open the door and let him out, then close it back. One night I woke up and the cat was meowing at the door and it woke me up but the door opened and the cat hissed and ran out really fast. I asked my mom the next morning why they didn't close my door and they said they didn't open it. The last story is when I was very upset and nearly suicidal one year during Christmas break, the police just randomly showed up at my house. The policeman said he was patrolling our neighborhood and felt like something was wrong at our house. I'm absolutely certain Kevin had something to do with it. So this is currently happening in the house I'm living in, in NJ. A week or so ago at 3 a.m. I was just getting up to turn the heating off and potter around after falling asleep on the sofa. I was yawning and rubbing my eyes a lot and was just about to get up to go to bed when I realized this noise getting louder and louder, like you don't realize it's happening until it's super loud. I suddenly realize and turn my head around to see the kettle boiling by itself. You have to push a button down and it glows blue, which was highlighting the shadow of the button that had definitely been pressed. I freak out thinking I've lost time and it was me but I've forgotten soil rationalize and before I can stop myself the words but I don't want tea or coffee come out of my mouth and at which point the kettle clicks off. Like I literally heard the switch. It wasn't at the end of the boil either, I'm English and so used to 220 watt outlets which do everything twice as fast so I know it was in the middle of the boil. Also as soon as I said that I felt guilty like I shouldn't have been scared. Like it was a friendly offer. Two days later I was with a friend at the dining room table, both of us at least five foot and round the corner from the kettle, nobody else in the house, when it starts boiling again. My friend rushes over and points out the button has been pushed. So much relief came over me that I wasn't insane and I explained to my friend that this happened to me at night. A few nights ago I was lying in bed and could hear a conversation at 4am, no one around, neighbors are 20 feet away either side. Then the kettle starts boiling. I'm pissed so I literally say out loud, please stop boiling the kettle, we have people asleep upstairs and it clicked off again. 
This could just be a faulty kettle and coincidence, I don't believe in ghosts whatsoever and have never seen or felt anything before. It's just freaky, but it's not scary. Only my first instinct. I feel as though someone is trying to take care of me, like when you were sick off school and lying in bed and your mum or dad would take care of you and bring you soup and stuff. Very very strange. TLDR, my three-year daughter talks about a guy called Mr. Longneck and says creepy stuff about it. I'll begin by saying I'm personally more on the side of a skeptic frame of mind with any paranormal experience, but enough things have happened in the last year to make me at least question that and entertain the possibility that this is legit and not just my daughter's active imagination. These events have occurred only in the house my husband and I bought in June of 2017, which was built in the 1920s. First, in October of 2017, I was laying her down for bed, in the dark with only moonlight lighting the bedroom. She pointed across the room and asked, Mom, who's that guy? I looked for a toy or something she could be referring to but saw nothing, so I asked, what guy, honey? She responded that he was right there and gestured toward the closed bedroom door. Still curious, I asked her what he was doing, in case I could piece together some recent episode of pretend play or a toy she commonly talked about. She said he was hiding. I asked if he was scared. She said, no, he's hiding. Creepy. During this whole exchange, she was calm and chipper, not scared. What made it strange was that she was two at the time and didn't really engage in pretend play or storytelling at that point, and as I mentioned, no toys were in sight. For there we just had a funny toddler story to tell our friends and family that we affectionately named that guy. This is the umbrella name we generally use for any other episodes, or weird stuff that happens around the house, that guy is pulling a prank. Next, in Jan or February of 2018, I was again laying her down for bed along with her then six-month-old brother. We were doing the usual cuddle-up night-night talk, when she said something along the lines of, now it's time for bed. Just me and you and him and her. My skeptic mind would argue that, him, could easily have been her little bro, but at the time she was still adjusting to having a sibling and rarely mentioned him, and he wasn't included in any of her talk that we were, just having. What really was strange, was her. Who's her? The only other female in the house is our cat and she wasn't in the room at the time. Also, no toys were in bed with us and none were in the near vicinity of her bed that she could have been talking about. A little later that spring, a new name came into conversation, Mr. Longneck. Short backstory, my daughter has this weird thing where she likes touching necks. Sometimes it's cuddly, sometimes it's when she's playing. We can't really explain it other than kids do weird stuff sometimes, and it started before we moved into this house. Anyway, she was getting put down for a nap and was a little high strung. She was doing her usual neck grabbing thing and suddenly did it a little tougher than usual, but not enough to hurt, and said in a growly voice, Mr. Longneck. Mr. Longneck. I had never heard her use this name and it isn't a character in any YouTube or Netflix show she watches, so I asked who Mr. Longneck was. She just kind of giggled it off and was asleep ten minutes later. This was when I started getting creeped out a bit by her stories. In April of 2018, my husband found a time capsule in one of our heating vents and we spent the afternoon looking through it. There had been a fire in our home in 2009, which we knew about and in which no one was hurt. During the renovation after the fire, the owners at the time found a bunch of old stuff in the walls and included it with some pictures of the fire and a couple newspaper clippings. Among the old stuff was a pack of pearl buttons, some store catalogues from the 1940s, and a small notebook with some handwritten names inside. I presume these are the names of the original inhabitants, and I plan to find a book again and look up the history behind the names inside as well as the home. 
After all this, my husband and I are suspicious that if there is something paranormal going on, maybe these objects are keeping some energy here or something. I know this is long, but we're almost done here. In about October 2018, I was driving to my mother's house with only my son and daughter in the car. Along the way, daughter, now three, asked from the back seat, Mom, is that Grandpa? I said, where? She pointed to the empty front seat and said, right there. I told her Grandpa was at home, as he had just recently moved in with us due to health issues. There was no one around on the street or sidewalks for her to point at either. Now, there have been minor other events that have happened, but these were the biggest ones to describe in detail. I've posted this in another subreddit as well, and received advice to engage her further in conversation when it comes up. While we have to an extent, to encourage her to be comfortable talking about it, I never pushed it, in order to avoid leading the conversation or pulling answers out of her that she would offer, just to appease the conversation. One day, though, and a few times after, I just decided to ask her about it. Below is a brief detail of what she has said in roughly the past month. Me, can you tell me about that guy? Daughter, what guy? Me, you don't remember that guy. Daughter, no. Me, what about Mr. Longneck? Daughter, oh, yeah. Face lights up me, can you tell me about him? And various other questions lead to. Mr. Longneck is a grown-up. He wears a monster clothes and a hat. He is nice but also scary. He says trick or treat but doesn't wear a costume. He lives far away, and goes with Santa in the sky to his house where he belongs. She says he comes to our house at nap time, which she no longer has but was generally the afternoon. He knocks on our big door, patio door, walks through the kitchen. These were her exact words and while she was telling me this, was pointing a path from the door to one of our living room windows. I asked what he says or does, and among a few things, she mentioned he played in the kitchen with her with the spinny cow toy. This is one of those Fisher-Price pull string farm toys. She never plays with it, I rarely see it, and have never seen it in the kitchen. The specific details of this piqued my interest, for sure. I also asked if he ever brought a friend, to see if I could follow up on the her mentioned earlier. He brings a friend, she is a little girl, not a grown-up, and has yellow hair like me. She is never scared of these talks, although she withdraws from the conversation when I ask about his neck and why it is long. So that's pretty much it. Thanks if you read the whole thing. I welcome any comments and advice. We have sagged the house, but quite a while ago and plan to do it again. I think we will probably also get rid of the old items from the walls after we find out more about them, which is sad because it's the home's history. Looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say. The house my parents currently live in and the house we lived in before they moved. The spirit s. In the house we all lived in never felt malevolent. More mischievous. It would do silly things like move stuff, turn on lights, turn off the microwave. We did see something once in the hallway. My mom and I had seen my dad go that direction so naturally we assumed the shadowy movement we saw was him. When my mom called over to remind him to shut the light back off, he called from a bedroom away from the hallway that the light wasn't on. Another time, right after my son was born, I heard it. He was about two months old and very colicky and my mom would hear us sometimes and get up to check on me. I fell asleep kinda after he finally fell asleep one night with him on my chest in the recliner and heard someone walk across the carpet towards us. I asked who I thought was my mom if we woke her up and half opened my eyes to nothing in front of me. Both things were kinda creepy and I was definitely a little grimacing face afterwards but I never felt scared there. Their new house is kinda the same but you can tell it's not the same spirit. I dk how to explain it. We have seen them multiple times, full figured, and very clearly. 
There's a younger woman in 1900s clothing with lighter colored hair and a kind face. The other spirit is a boy about eight also in 1900s clothing with darker hair and a saddened face. Neither of them have ever spoken but usually you can hear them walking around faintly. The first time it was me. My mom and dad were both out and all three of the grandsons were playing outside. I went to come out of the bathroom and saw a boy in the hallway out of the corner of my eye. I went to turn and yell at him to go back outside but he was gone. I ran up to the front of the house and called out to the kids who were all three clear across the yard and couldn't have possibly been inside. The second and third times were both my dad. His first encounter was about two days after mine. I hadn't said anything to anyone so he couldn't have possibly described the same boy unless he'd seen him. He was waking up and rolled over to the woman and the boy standing next to his bed. When he went to wipe his eyes, they disappeared. He thought it was my son and I but we weren't in the house. The second time it was only the woman and she was walking across the house. They don't do much either outside of close open doors and steal my mom's left shoes. We did investigate but couldn't find anything about the property and the house was built in the 70s so the clothing doesn't fit the house. My parents are divorced and my mom always used to talk about my dad's house. We had the back room. This is middle America, super small town, less than 200 people and kinda crappy houses but my dad's house was a super old house with an addition. The new addition was the back room. My dad always kept it sealed off. It was full of boxes and it had a bedroom attached. The back room was awesome as a kid because there was so much stuff back there. Boxes full of old toys, papers, weird crap, fishing lures, books, etc. All stuff that had been stored. My mom would always tell us that she put her guitar back there and would always hear it being strummed at random times, day or night. It just sounded like someone was running their hand across all strings. We always had really minor weird stuff at that house, but nothing that would make me say there was an issue 100%. Footsteps, the occasional bang, stuff being moved. Could have been anything. I'm closer to 11 or 12 now and I decide that since nobody is using the back room it should be mine. The bedroom, gigantic living room and all. Oddly enough, my dad agreed, but it was later at night so I move a mattress in on the floor determined I would set up the room as my own the next day. I went to bed that night on my mattress on the floor and woke up super late in the night. It sounded like a thousand birds in the room all flying around and smacking into walls. Or like a thousand hands, all over the walls, smacking the walls. Including a foot horse above my head. It went on for at least 30 minutes once I put the blankets over my head. Finally I mumbled, let me sleep tonight and I'll never sleep here again, and it stopped. I didn't say crap the next day. I was terrified but I was also scared of being laughed at. The day passed and at night I was freaked out but still scared to say anything to anyone, so I started to go back to bed, and my dad opened the door and said, if there's something back here bothering you, you don't have to sleep back here. I immediately got up and slept in another room. Pick of the house from 2013 via Google Maps, it's now burned to the ground. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video please like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. New videos released daily. Leave a comment below and let us know what Reddit content you would like us to cover next.